may have a shrink you're going to, you may have a best friend you're going to, but there's 24 hours in the day where you're alone in this brain and your brain is talking to you in all kinds of ways and it wants to control you and pull you in these different pockets. If you can't control your own brain and your brain controls you, you're you got to tell your brain where you want to go and how you want to go and how you want to get there. You got to control it. If not, it's over. What existed for me was, okay, man, how am I going to fucking make this work? And, I, and all I knew back then was hard work. The only way anything gets accomplished. That's all I heard back in those days. You got to work hard. You got to work hard. I'm not getting how to... I can't get this paragraph. I can't remember what the f in this paragraph to pass this test to get in the military. Read again. Read again. But if you're not getting it, write it out. And that's how I started learning. Okay, well, I can't. I got to write out everything I do. And then write it out again. And write it out again. And guess what happened? I got it. I got it. I can't swim. I'm negative buoyant. Go back again. I can't swim. Go back again. Go back again. Go back again. I got it. I realize if I keep going back and going back and going back until the sh just becomes, your mind will say, okay, we're gonna figure it out because he is not going to stop. It's not like, I'm gonna try one more time. No, I'm gonna, it's just like, alarm clock goes off, boop, we're going back. I can't read right, we're going back. I gave myself no way out and my mind realized that. They said, okay, we're gonna adapt and overcome now. Like a lot of people say, trying hard. They, your mind knows, man. It knows this guy's bullshitting me, man. This guy's lying. There's no truth behind it. When I was in Navy, still training people, I go, how were you there for 18 months? The program was only six months long. You were in three hell weeks in one year. No one's ever done that. How did you do that? I talk about the new norm. When I lived in a $7 a month place and I was growing up for a short period of time, I loved it. I didn't, know any, I, I didn't know any different. That was my norm. Once we moved out of that place, we moved to a $236 a month place. I was like, Shit, I never want to go back to that little piece of shit. But if you go back to that $7 a month place and you realize this is where I live, this is all I got. Your mind says, Roger that, this is home. So when I was going to Navy SEAL training for 18 months and going back to all the hard parts over and over again, I told myself after the first time, I knew it was gonna be a long journey there. My body was breaking down. It was, it was just how it was going on. I said, you know what, this is my new norm. So my mind said, it's like going to work. Like you go to work, you put your suit and tie on, I go into suffering every day. Every day, suffering, being broken, duct taping my feet up, stress fractures, shin splints, being broken. This is my new norm. And your mind says, if we're not broken, this ain't normal. We gotta be broken. So then your mind starts to get tougher and tougher and more callous. People, how, how did you run on broken feet? Broken, broken shins. My mind knew this is how we operate. We're in, we're in Navy SEAL training. This is what we are. I became hell. And that became my new norm. I gave myself no way out. There was nothing outside these walls of hell, nothing. I became, I love God, but for a short period of time, I became the devil because that was hell. I became, I became the boss, the owner, the CEO of Navy SEAL training. That was my mindset. And that's how you get through things. You put yourself, you immerse yourself in wherever it is and you become that. You become that and give yourself no way out. When I was 297 pounds and I was fat as hell trying to be a Navy SEAL, the scariest thing in the world to me, even to this day, was that that could have been the rest of my life. I thought then I was trying hard. That's the scariest thing in the world. I thought then 297 pound, working for Ecolab, spraying for cockroaches, making a thousand dollars a month. I thought that was me at my 100% potential. Come to find out, a few years later, I wasn't anywhere near that. 106 pounds less, graduate Navy SEAL training, went on to do all these other things. Looking back on that, that was me trying hard. 
That's why people gotta understand what is in us, we have no idea until we start trying hard. And I mean really trying hard, where you're obsessed with, hey, this is my new norm. My new norm is that, wow, this isn't always fun. It's not always meant to be fun. And that's when you know you're trying hard. Hi, I'm Brad Callen, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how anyone can quickly and easily create doodle videos, just like the one you watch. People hear my story and think this guy is sadistic. I realize how the, how the brain works. I figured out how the brain works. I, I'm a scared kid, and that's what gives me so much power. I had no foundation, and I built this off of just researching the mind. The feeling you get is basically invincibility. You realize that you can't do it all the time. When you need to do it, I know I can go to a place that I can live in. And when you know that you can run on broken legs and you can do certain things that a lot of people can do, but they're not willing to do, this power, this sympathetic nervous system of fight or flight and you're fighting, it, it gives you this charge of energy of when you're sitting there at 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning and you're duct taping your because they're broken and you're doing it by yourself and you're going through arguably one of the hardest training in the world and these guys most of them are healthy and you're going through it broken and you are at a disadvantage but you're still there you can feed into that and tap into that for a lot of power but if you look at it well i'm broken man I, like i'm not going to make it but if you look at it as, man, I'm broken and I'm still here and I'm fighting and I'm gonna find a way to get through this because I have no other place to go. It gives you a lot of power. When things start to suck really, really bad, my brain and a lot of people's brain, don't, they, they don't go to your dad beating you up. Your brain says, we gotta get the f out of here. This is miserable. So anger goes away a lot of times when you're suffering because your brain just says, we gotta run, we gotta go. So that anger is not popping up saying, oh, I'm gonna show them, I'm gonna show those people. No, there has to be a much deeper, when I say deeper, it has to be down to mineral, mineral soil. It has to be down to that nice mineral soil where nothing can burn. You can't burn dirt. So it has to be down that low that literally is something in you that's at the core of your soul. And, but, you, but you don't find it unless you spend a lot of time with what you want to be in life. You, I, I can't give that to you. Right. You can't give it to somebody. When, when you find your true passion in life, and my passion for me when like, oh, I want to be, now I give a Navy SEALs, Army, I don't give a shit. I want to serve my country. I cared about, I want to be someone that I'm proud of. I want to look at myself because I was so disappointed. That accountability where I talk about, I was so disappointed in what I saw every day. I wanted everybody to love David Goggins. And a lot of people did. I didn't love myself. But I knew a lot of us want to find peace first. So people say, man, you all finished. I'm at peace right now because I went through that. Right. You don't find peace first. If you do, Merry Christmas, more power to you, more power to you. I found peace on the opposite end of finding myself. And no one really finds himself without going through trials, tribulations, suffering, accountability. And accountability is suffering. Being accountable every day for doing right for yourself, for the people next to you, it's miserable. It's hard. So, you know, even the smallest right, details. Let's break this down. Yeah, Becky, I love him too. And that was actually, again, um, kind of like
how I broke you guys into Gary V. Like, that's probably his nicest video you'll ever watch. <laughs> because Gary is not a nice guy. I mean, like, he's a nice guy, but I'm sure in, like, person maybe. But, like, when it comes to, like, his motivational stuff, like, he is usually very raw, very harsh, very in your face, like, no excuses, even, don't even think to say them, right, around him. <laughs> um, but I wanted to, like, ease you guys into these, these guys, you know, like Gary V and David Goggins, like, they can be super harsh, but because they speak so much truth right? They say the things that a lot of other people are kind of scared to say to people. And I really appreciate that. Like, I really appreciate when someone can just be so honest, it stings a little bit, only because you know the truth in it, right? Like, you hear it and you go, ooh, ouch, that was true. <laughs> you know, um, you have that, that feeling of like, man, this guy's mean. But because on the inside, you know, the truth that's coming out of his mouth and it's not um, sugarcoated. And I really appreciate that. I appreciate somebody that's just willing to just give me the raw answer or the raw motivation that I need rather than being like, just believe good things will come and good things will come. Yay. Yeah. Ideally, that's where you can start. But then there's going to have to be a moment where you're going to actually have to do the hard work. You're going to actually have to push yourself outside of your comfort zone. You're going to have to accept the accountability that comes with coaching somebody. You're going to have to step up and be there and be better. Right. So that's where I'm really kind of pulling in both of these videos is that, okay, so we have the concept of we need to be better, right? We need to um, push ourselves and, and expect more from ourselves and not allow excuses to slip into our lives. But then there's that point where you go, oh, okay, so how do I just be better? Right. And I know we were, I was kind of saying this in between the videos that it's like, how can I expect more from myself when I feel like I'm already being pulled in a million different directions? How can I um, put more in my schedule when I'm already scheduled from 5.30 a.m. to literally like 8.30 at night when I put Derek asleep? How am I supposed to put more in my schedule? Where am I? You know what I mean? And so you start to create almost excuses for yourself of like, well, I don't have any more time. I don't have any more blah, 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 whatever. And, and so we start to validate our own excuses, right? And I think where we can start transitioning from, instead of giving ourselves excuses, what if we just found a way, right? What if we asked for help? I know that's a really big one that I like to do when I feel like I have no more room in my schedule. I say, okay, well, who can I pass dinner on to so I can have more time on my computer and so I can make sure that I do have time to do that work or to do that video or to do that um, check-in, right? So how can I ask for help? So that's a really big one. I want us to all remember that when you feel overwhelmed or you feel like you want to put more in there, find something that you can actually let go of, right? Like, I know we're capable of ordering food every once in a while. I know Mike's very capable of making dinner. I know I'm very capable of meal prepping to remove that time throughout the week. I could do it on Sunday so I have meals ready so that way I don't take up as much time for dinner every single night. Right, so I can start planning ahead to create that time for myself during the week. So how can I think outside the box? I think is where it really comes down to a lot of times when we feel like we need more time, right? Or more hands. 
right? Okay, who can I ask to bring hands in, right? Maybe I need to ask somebody to watch Derek for a couple hours so I can go and do this. Maybe I need to say, hey, Mike, you know, I need you home by five so that way you can come home and, and watch a Derek because I've got a meeting um, and I couldn't do them during the day because I have homeschooling with Derek. And so I need you to come home and watch Derek and go to the pool with him for two hours so I can get some meetings done with my girls, right? Maybe you're going to have to ask for help. Maybe you're going to have to rearrange some things, get up a little earlier, stay up a little bit later, mix that favorite TV show. How can you create space in your schedule or in your day to plug in to be better? Okay. And make sure that these are things that are actually going to be productive to you. Okay. I don't want you to take your favorite TV show out to sit and just scroll Facebook, right? <laughs> like, cause then now, now you're like, oh, I'm missing my favorite show. And I'm just like sitting over here on Facebook and I'm just scrolling. Like it's gotta be productive if you're going to, or um, I don't know if you guys even saw in the warrior women chat, I just sent out these little um, five minute power, how, what were they called? Power something. Um, but it's literally things that you can do in five minutes to like move your business forward. One of them was even like commercial, uh, commercial breaks. So like maybe you're watching your favorite TV show and you have five minutes of commercials in between. And so during that five minutes, you do, 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 do five friend requests, you know? Um, and so find those power pockets. That's what they're called. Power pockets of where you can maybe make little small areas in your life or in your day a little bit more powerful okay so yeah maybe you're sitting and watching your show but you mute it during the commercials and you do a little power pocket where you're just being a little bit more productive rather than just sitting and watching mindless commercials which I hate commercials anyway. <laughs> so I'd so much rather like friend request people on <laughs> Facebook than I would sit and watch commercials. So something like that. Um, and so I really love the part where he says like, um, you know, he thought that that was like the rest of his life when he was, you know, 200 pounds working this dead end job. And he thought that he was working hard. Right. And he probably was a hard worker. But was he living to his potential? No, not even, not even a fraction, right? Because if you look at what he's doing now, where he's a writer and he was a Navy SEAL and he like went through all of this like hell week three times, three times as many times as you know anybody else would ever even dream of um, with broken bones and, and pain that we probably can't even fathom, right? that's him pushing himself to his fullest potential. It's going to hurt guys. It's going to be painful. It's going to be hard. There's going to be times where you might think, man, I don't think I'm going to make it through this. Right. That's when you know you're pushing hard enough. Cause there's going to be times where you're like, Hmm, this, this is good. This is good. Things are going really well. I'm, I'm working really hard. I'm pushing myself. But if you took like a personal inventory of just you, could you work harder? There's times in my life where I know for a fact I could have done better had I taken that little extra time had I maybe reread my content rather than just typing it and pumping it out. I probably could have made it a little bit better had I reread it and proofread it. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm like all about just like typing and sending it out and then being like, oops, sorry, I made a bunch of typos. But really, if I went back and I was a little bit better in certain moments and I just went back and reread my stuff and proofread it myself and fixed all that stuff and sent it out to be better, right? Like, could we take that extra second? Could we take that extra moment? Could we push ourselves for that one more rep? Right? You know, how there's times where you're like, I, oh my God, my hands are burning. My legs are burning and they're at eight. And she's saying, I have to go to 10. And you're like, I can't do two more, but you do two more. Right? 
the difference between doing two more, you guys, and actually setting the weight down and not doing those two is night and day in your body. It is the, the results that you're going to get in those two extra reps is everything because your body's already exhausted and your body doesn't grow unless it's already exhausted. So if you stopped at eight instead of 10, you're cheating yourself every single time, right? And so if you push yourself to do those two extra reps every single time, the progress you're gonna make is gonna get you so much further than the times that you stopped and the times that you quit. So I love these videos because I just feel like in the first one, I, to me, like um, you guys, uh, I think Brittany had done two days of The Secret back when I was moving. Um, I love The Secret. The Secret is like the beginning. It's like the, the surface. So like you have to believe you're capable, right? You have to believe that life has better plans for you. You have to believe and have faith and um, in your soul, know that you are made for more, be better, right? That's like the surface stuff. And then there's a point where you're like, okay, I believe it. <laughs> now what? Now what? Do I just just sit back? No. So then that's where you can bring in that second video or even what I would love to do is move into the compound effect for you guys. Um, the compound effect was a game changer for me because it, it kind of gapped the, okay, I'm, I believe I can be successful and I know what it looks like to be successful, but how do I actually get there? What do I need to do to actually get from just my belief to all the actions in between to where I'm achieving it? Okay. And so the compound effect really helped me learn, okay, it's what I do every single day. I get up at 5.30. I hit that workout. I do my warrior hour. I'm doing the homeschooling. I do my power hour. I'm doing the sneak peeks. I'm doing the friend requests. I'm sending the messages. I'm signing the girls up. I'm checking in with the team. Every single little detail that I do every single day is going to add up. It's like, um, I've shared this with you guys before, but I'll reiterate it because it always, I know I've told you guys this a million times, but once you repeat stuff, it sometimes it sticks a little bit different certain days. But think of yourself as a miracle round, right? Um, you know, you and your friends are holding on to that miracle round and you're like, all right, let's get this puppy moving. And you like go to push it, right? And your feet start slipping on the rocks and you're like, holy crap, this thing isn't moving. This thing isn't moving. Your feet are just slipping, slipping, slipping. And all of a sudden it goes, and it budges just a little bit, right? And so you're like, oh, we got it, we got it, we got it. And so you start going and you start pushing and you start running. And all of a sudden it's getting momentum. It's getting momentum. And so you're like, boom, let's jump on. Let's ride this baby. And so now you're cruising, right? Maybe that's like mid challenge. You're like, I'm two weeks in, I'm cranking it. I feel like good. And then there's a point where the miracle round is going to slow down and you're going to go, Ooh, okay. So I have the opportunity to either a sit here and let the miracle go round come to a complete stop which then I'm going to have to get off and re-push it the whole way. We're going to have to restart it. We're going to be slipping. We're going to be falling. Or I can just keep pushing one foot, right? Maybe I'm not going to ever let it stop. So every once in a while, I just put that one foot down and I push it and I push it and you just keep going. And so I like to look at my life as that. And I know that so many people <laughs> dump on that merry go round and then they let it stop. And then they go, I have to start all over. And I'm like, well, you wouldn't have if you would have kept pushing. But you, you were out the gate, hot as hell, right? Like going crazy. And then all of a sudden, you stop pushing. You can never, ever, ever stop pushing. Even if you think you're to a place that you're enjoying, right? 
I was so excited to become a one star diamond coach. Now what? On to the next, right? Okay, so we got that one. Well, who's next to get to go up to diamond? Okay, got Alicia. Okay, <laughs> who's next? You know, I, what if I just said, okay, guys, I'm good. I'm just good right there. That's all the further I, that's, that was what's on my vision board. So I'm just good right there. Right? I could easily say that. But once you get to a certain place, then you're like, hmm. I like Forrest Gump style. Well, I made it this far. Might as well keep on running. Right? Like, well, I made it to this far. Might as well keep on going. Might as well keep on going. Well, I made it here. So maybe I can make it over here too. Okay? So maybe you signed up one girl. Well, then I bet you could sign up another. And maybe you lost that five pounds. Well, you got five more to go, I bet you could lose that too. But not if you stop. If you ever stop, what happens, right? Even just a day of yesterday. Yesterday I had two donuts. Oh my God, my whole body was like, like this morning I didn't want to get up. I just feel like I have like, like a sugar rush, like still in my body. Trust me, those donuts were friggin' delicious. <laughs> but there's the moment where you're like, okay, I gotta get right back on track. Right? Like, woke up this morning, gotta hit my workout, gotta hit my recover, gotta get my energized, gotta get my shake back in, gotta have a big old salad for lunch, getting right back on track. Because if not, what happens? Right? Those donuts turn into a candy bar, that turn into chips, that turn into, oops, I didn't even have a shake today, that turn into, oh, I haven't had any water in five hours. You know, like those habits, you'll be, it, it's so interesting how quickly those, those nasty habits will just come right back in, right? And so it, now that I know that, I'm like, okay, have your donut, and then get right back on track, right? Don't continue that spiral of downward shame and guilt. And that's what happens a lot of times is like, we'll have a donut, right? And then we'll be like, I can't believe I did that. I just messed up all the work I did. And like, we get all dramatic about it and guilty and shame and we feel bad. And then like, because we feel bad, let's continue eating worse. And then it's like this downward spiral when in reality, what if we just said, damn, that donut was good. That was good. All right, back on track. Like, what if we just said that, right? Like, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever done like to be mindset. To be mindset changed the way my brain thought about food. And it was really more of like a guilt-free concept, not saying that you can just go and have, you know, 12 donuts, but it was like, this is a treat, not a cheat, right? I am treating myself to a donut and it's delicious. And it's not ruining my whole day. It's not ruining my whole plan. It's not ruining my whole life. It was a treat. I enjoyed it fully. Every bite was so good. <laughs> and then I'm right back on track. Right back on track. Okay? And so allow yourself to do these things. And then remind yourself that you're capable of getting right back on track. You're capable of pushing that variable around. Put a leg down. Give it a kick. Yeah, see, Alicia, I love that, right? Like, enjoy your pizza, girl. Treat yourself every once in a while. Or like, man, maybe sometimes you just don't want to cook freaking dinner. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like have the pizza. Because the moment you try to restrict yourself to what happens, then you have like an all out binge out. And that's usually what happens is then we binge and we beat ourselves up and then we really do start that downward spiral. And it's just not 
necessary or fair to your mental state when you know, hmm, I'm right back on track. I'm better than that. I can be right back on track. And it's not going to derail anything. And I think when we just like stop focusing on like those little negative things, right? Yeah, I had a donut on Sunday, but I also had six salads throughout the rest of the week. I also had an amazing dinner where I had veggies and protein and healthy carbs all week long. So yeah, I could focus on that one tiny little thing that I did throughout the week, or I could focus on the hundreds of other amazing things that I did. Your, your brain is so powerful, you guys. It's so powerful. Use it to your advantage, right? Like you control every thought you have. So if there's a moment where you're like, oh my God, Jenny, I can't believe you had that freaking don't, you'd be like, whoop, wait a minute. I'm not beating myself up over that. You could say, mm, flip those words, Missy Elliott style, flip it and reverse it. <laughs> and I loved that donut. It was really good and totally worth it. Boom. Flip your perspective in your head and you guys, it's going to start playing out in your life. We waste so much time beating ourselves up over shit that doesn't matter. And when you stop doing that, then that's what you have. More time, more energy, and more effort to put towards the things that actually matter. Right? The things that can actually make you better. You know what makes you better? Not beating yourself up over having a donut. That's what makes you better. Stopping negative self-talk every time you slip up. Who cares? <laughs> Move on. You already made the mistake, but now you're going to spend more energy and more time beating yourself up over it? Why? Why? I don't understand that. Move on. It's in the past. You already put it in your mouth. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> you know? Um, and, and I just think that's like something that a lot of us do because I have a lot of girls, you know, in the challenge group that'll post and, and they'll be like, oh, I just ate terrible this week and I'm just going to start NBF all over. And I'm like, why? You were on day seven. Why would you start all over? Because you didn't work out for two days. Right. And I always remember this analogy I heard like way back in the beginning of my coaching. But if you were running a cross country race or a marathon and you were two miles in and you fell down onto your knees, you don't get up and start over. No, you get up, brush your knees off and you keep running from the two miles you were at. Why would you start over? Right. Because to me also, like in that mindset, when you just like tell yourself that you need to start over, then you're also discrediting all seven days that you did do before that. And you think that you've ruined them because of the two days that you took off because you were at a cabin with your family. When in reality, you could just come home, pick up right where you were and keep trucking. Okay. And and maybe that's not maybe that's not something you're having a problem with, but maybe you've got a challenger that does that. Maybe you have a coach that does that, right? Or maybe you have somebody in your life. Maybe they're not even on a team or anything, but maybe you have somebody in your life that you're like, man, they do that all the time. They just like throw everything out the window they've ever learned the moment they make one mistake. And it's like, why are they doing that? Why are they being, why? We're so hard on ourselves in all the wrong ways is how I feel like I'm very hard on myself but I'm not hard on myself because I slipped up and maybe missed a workout for a day or ate something that wasn't on my approved list right that stuff I don't even it doesn't even phase me anymore I don't even think about it I'm like oops missed my workout today I'll get it done tomorrow 
right? Like move on from that stuff because the moment you beat yourself up, again, you're wasting energy and time and mental power over something you already chose to do. If you chose to do it, <laughs> you can't also beat yourself up for it, right? And so um, I want to like really rethink that if I chose to do something, I have to be okay with it. And I'm not gonna sit here and beat myself up over, over it. I'm gonna move on and what can I do next? What's next? What's next? How can I be better? How can I try again? How can I keep going? And I love what um, like David Gagnon said is like, what's your hard? Like, and are you really trying to the level that you know you're capable of? I can't tell you what you're capable of. I mean, I have an idea of what I think you're capable of, right? Like, of course, I've thought about, man, I could see her being a huge diamond coach if she just believed in what she, you know, was really capable of. Like, I can have this huge vision for you guys. Even like Tanil said it to me last week. She's like, she, um, cause about that email that she got from that guy from corporate. And I was like, oh my God, what if you're, what if you're going to be on a beach body promo video? Like, da, da, da. and she's like, I love the way you think so big. Like, and it was such a cute little, and I was I even told her, I was like, that's like the best compliment I think I've ever gotten. But I loved it because I do realize my mind goes there. Like, my mind instantly goes, how, how big can that be for her? I'm like, ooh, what if she's in a promo video? What if she's like in the Beachbody promo video and she gets to do an interview and they get to fly her out and do like an interview? I don't freaking know. They could maybe just want to share her video or a little picture on like in Instagram stories. I don't know. But in my mind, I'm going to go freaking big. I'm going to envision it being like the biggest thing that they could offer her but I need her to see that vision. Like you guys have to have that vision for yourself. In my mind, I can feel what it would feel like to be in the top 10 up on the stage at Summit. I've, I've envisioned it so much in my brain, it can make me cry, like just thinking about it. Because I have the details of it the the feeling of it like what i would wear what i would look like what it would what it would look like to be on the stage looking at everybody else in the crowd i just have a very um fantasy style brain and it works on overdrive and i and I think also too, you guys, that maybe that was part of like my chakra when I was doing like the chakra um, test, like my third eye was like 94% overactive. You wanna know why? Because I fantasize all the time. I literally am just like daydreaming all the time. My brain is just like creating these crazy visions for me. But I also feel like, they pull me through a lot of stuff. They pull me through when coaching gets hard, when no, when I feel like nobody's paying attention or when some girl's in my DM talking crap to me, right? It pull like those visions, those, those goals, those dreams that I have to be a top coach, it pulls me through when little things get hard, right? So get some visions of what, what are you doing here? Why do you show up to warrior hour every day? What are you gaining here? Is it maybe to host your own warrior hour someday? Like, could you imagine yourself showing up every single day and having girls count on you to come up with information to tell them? Because I mean, I pictured it. Now, maybe I didn't picture it every single day. That was a lot of accountability for me to step up to. Granted, it helped because we were in quarantine at the time. So I was like, well, I'm home. So, you know, 
being somewhere at eight o'clock every day was pretty easy because I couldn't go anywhere. But now it's a lot of accountability for me. Accountability can be scary, but also very empowering and very motivating, right? So when you start to vision where you want to go and you want to really focus and maybe you want to be somebody or you want to do something specific, you're going to have to get the details down. When you sit and envision what it would look like if you achieved your highest goal. And then I want you to go bigger. Like bigger, bigger. <laughs> okay. Not just like, oh, I want to be comfortable. Like, what about extraordinary? What about amazing? Right? Because we could all achieve a decent life. But what if we went bigger? But then coming back, how do we get bigger? How do we get better? It's every single day doing the things we know we need to do, not doing the things that um, are no longer serving us. And if we do choose to do those things, we don't beat ourselves up over them, scratch it off and move on. Because I think that's like what comes down to it is like, we're like, how can I be a good coach when I'm still slipping up? How can I coach women uh, getting abs when I don't have abs? Or how can I coach women to lose weight when I've never had to lose a bunch of weight? All these things, all these voices will start coming in your head and start questioning you and going, who do you think you are? Are you sure you can do that? Right? All those little voices will start to come in. And I need you to drown them out. Okay? Because the voices inside of your head are a direct correlation to what you have in your life. So if you're looking at your life and you're like, it's good, it's okay, it's decent, it sucks, whatever you think your life is right now, is a direct correlation to what you think you deserve. Okay? So there's a moment where you have to say, I deserve better than this. I mean, I even love my, I love my life, but I think that we deserve better still. Like I, I love that I get to homeschool Derek and I love that Mike owns his own business and we got a freaking pool and we just moved to Orlando and things are great. But in my heart, they could be better. They could be extraordinary. So how am I going to achieve that for my family, for myself? I got to refine it. I got to refine my schedule. I got to push a little bit harder. I got to make it a little bit better. Okay. And so now it's time. Maybe you've gotten to a point where you're like, now what? It's time to refine. It's time to be better. Because as we all know, nobody is a final project. Once you figure out this, it exposes this. Once you figure out that, it'll expose something else. And then you just keep working and you have to be willing to keep showing up and keep pushing forward and keep saying, well, I made it this far. Might as well keep on going. Get a vision. Okay? Get a vision. And when you get there, know that that vision is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So keep pushing to be better. And are you really putting in your best effort? I can't tell you what your best effort is. I think you guys are all working really hard. But in your mind, when you're alone, when you're sitting just by yourself, 
you say, am I doing everything possible? Am I really pushing myself hard enough? Am I working out with a broken freaking leg? Right? Am I going through Navy SEAL training with broken legs? No. I can tell you right now, I'm not. Am I capable? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. All right? But it's like comes from up here, right? Like he just said, like, I'm, I'm not quitting this. I'm not quitting this. So whatever I have to do to survive, duct tape my freaking feet. I will duct tape my legs because I'm going through this. Guys, there have been times where like, even in my coaching business, where things have gotten a little hard. And had I ever said, mm, if it gets hard, I'll quit. I would have quit already. But in my mind, I've said, I'm in this. For life forever, regardless of how hard it gets. I'm here. And so I just keep rising to the occasion, pushing myself a little bit harder, pushing myself to do more meetings, pushing myself to be a bigger team. I just keep rising. And then when I get there, I'm like, holy crap, might as well go to the next level. So realize that about yourself too. Recognize where you're at right now where you want to go and how you're going to get there. Cause it's going to take a lot of hard work. So mentally set yourself up to say, this is going to be hard, but I'm in it regardless of how long it's going to take. Right. If I would have said, Oh, I want to be a one-star diamond coach by two years in the business, or I'm just giving up. Well, then none of this would exist. Had I given up then, I wouldn't be here now. And so you need to ask yourself, what are you willing to do regardless of how long it's going to take? Okay. Regardless of how long it's going to take, what's your goal? Maybe it'll take you 10 years. Are you willing to put in 10 years of grinding? before you get to that goal. I don't know, guys, you gotta ask yourself that. Is it worth it? What's worth it to you? To me, coaching, the moment I saw coaching, I was like, that's made for me. I was like, oh, I have a communications major. I have a women's studies major. I have been coaching cheerleading squads since I was like literally 12 years old. Um, I love working out. Health and fitness has always been a part of my life. Um, as a massage therapist, I've always loved muscles and the body. And even when I would be as a massage therapist, I would always be like semi-therapist-y too. Like people would talk to me and I would like help them through their problems and get super involved in my clients' lives. It's terrible. As I don't recommend that part. But um, <laughs> I've all, I, then coaching came into my life and I was like, Oh my gosh, it literally gives me a chance to like showcase everything I do. So when I saw coaching, I was like, that's made for me. I'm going all in on that. I haven't looked back since. Okay. You got to find your thing. What is it that you can go all in on and never look back? And I never even question whether coaching is right for me. It just, in my bones, I always know it is. In my heart, in my soul, like I wake up and I check my phone and I'm instantly cranking ideas. Five years into the game. <laughs> you know, I'm, I love it more now than I did in my first year. So you have to find what sets your soul on fire. <laughs> Without being cliche of my uplines team name. <laughs> But that was one of the things that really struck me too, is like when I first found Amy and was like, um, you know, kind of following her, I was like, Ooh, set your soul on fire. That's kind of a cool team name. I was like, and it really made sense to me because that's how I felt when I first started coaching was how I feel like 
I, I have like a fire in me that I haven't seen in like a long time. Okay. And maybe yours is something completely different and that's totally fine. But you got to find it. Whatever it is, it gets you freaking revved up for the day. You got to find it and then lean all the way in on it and go for it, regardless of how long it's going to take you to achieve whatever it is you're looking for. Be in it forever. All right, ladies. Hopefully that gets your gears turning because um, it's been getting my gears turning since I listened to those videos. And um, it just reminded me also that um, the level I'm at is great, but the level I'm going to is going to be even better. And I'm willing to put in the work to get there because I want it. I can see it. I can feel it. I can taste it. And the only way I'm going to get there is through hard freaking work. There's no way around it. My team is not going to just magically grow three times as big without me being here doing the work alongside of you guys, right? Like, I can't just be like, hey, you guys got that, right? You guys are good? All right, I'm going to go over here and just like swim in my pool all day, not doing any videos anymore, not doing any coaching, but you guys, please handle my team. Make it larger. Thanks. Right? Like, I can't ask that of you guys without being here putting in the freaking work. So, if you want it to grow, you're going to have to water it. You're going to have to plant the seeds. You're going to have to give it the sunshine. You're going to have to give it the love. Everything has to come from you. Okay? So, find your passion. It's in here. And you know what it is. Stop questioning it. Okay, don't question it. Just go, do. It'll come. It'll build itself. You just gotta be willing to like get outside of that comfort zone, which is hard. But the moment you do, I don't know about you guys, but the moment you guys do step out of your comfort zone, you realize it's not so scary. And that fear and excitement are the same thing. Okay, fear and excitement in your body are the same thing how you channel them. So you can say, oh, I'm really fearful to jump out of this plane right now, or I'm really excited to jump out of a plane. Same thing, same feeling in your body. It's how you choose to channel it. Okay. So don't be fearful of things. Be excited for things. Start switching that vocabulary around. That's going to be your first little trick. Catching the words that are coming out of your mouth or the words that are in your head like guilting yourself over eating a donut. Why do that? The words inside your head matter. Okay? So remember that. Whew. All right, ladies. I got to get a few things around for school, and we'll be starting that at 930. Also, don't forget, again, the Coach Sneak Peek will be running um, all day today plus all day tomorrow. So feel free to pop somebody in there. I would pop any challenger you have into there. Okay, so they understand too what it is you do as a coach. Even if they're on the free trial or just on BOD, say, hey, I'm gonna pop you into this coach sneak peek. I just want you to understand a little bit more about what we do as coaches, regardless of whether you ever think you're gonna be a coach. Okay, but you're planting that seed without them even knowing it. <laughs> I just saw a little head, I think, pop like right here. <laughs> um, all right, ladies. So um yeah, we'll leave on that. I hope maybe that gives you guys a little bit of insight. We'll continue it this week about the voices inside of your head, mindset, all of that fun stuff, okay? So, all right. I hope you guys have a fabulous day. Thanks for coming. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow, okay? Bye. <laughs>